Okay guys, so my topic for today is all about forecasting. So I will be your presenter. I'm Engineer Brands Edward Lagan. So first, uh, let's discuss what are the topics to be discussed for this video lecture. So first, we have this, uh, we will define what is forecasting. Okay. The next, the strategic importance of forecasting. Then followed by the seven steps in forecasting system. Then the fourth one will be the forecasting approaches. Then followed by the time series forecasting. And then associative forecasting methods. So we have the regression and correlation analysis. And followed by the monitoring and controlling forecast. And last will be the forecasting in the service sector. So guys, this video lecture will be divided into two sessions. So yung second video lecture will be uploaded. I'll try until next week. Okay. So supposedly dalawa kami magre-report ng uh, topic na to but my partner I think he dropped already because of his problem in the schedule and yung workload niya. Pati day off ata is na na, na, na. May pasok siya. So let's define what is forecasting. So guys, forecasting is the art and science of predicting future events. So this may involve so letter A so, taking historical data such as, for example, past sales and projecting them into the future with a mathematical model. Next, it may be subjective or intuitive prediction. So, for example, uh, we have a new product and will sell 20% more than the old one. Next, so it may be it may be based on demand driven data so such as customer plans to purchase and projecting them into the future and last or the forecast may involve a combination of this that is a mathematical model adjusted by a manager's good judgment so forecast may be influenced by a product position in its life cycle whether sales are in an introduction growth maturity or decline stage other products can be influenced by the demand for a related product for example so navigation systems may track with new car sales because there are limited limits to what can be expected from forecast we develop error measures preparing and monitoring forecasts can also be costly and time consuming so next, uh, we will discuss this, what we call the forecasting time horizons. So guys, a forecast is usually classified by the future time zone. Ayan. So lagi siyang future, uh, kaya nga forecast. Eh. So that it covers uh, time horizon fall into three categories. So what are those? So the first one is uh, the short range forecast. So ano ba yung short range forecast? So this forecast has a time span of up to one year but it's generally less than three months it is used for planning purchasing job scheduling workforce levels job assignments and production levels next we have this may medium range forecast so what is medium range forecast so a medium range or intermediate forecast generally span from three months up to three years so it is useful in sales planning production planning, and budgeting, cash budgeting, and analysis of various operating plans. And the last time horizon is the long-range forecast. So generally, so this is three years or more in time span. Long-range forecasts are used in planning for new products, capital expenditures, facility location, or expansion, and research and development. So medium and long range forecasts are distinguished from short range forecasts by three features. So what are these features? So the first one. First, intermediate and long range forecasts. So this deals with more comprehensive issues. Supporting management decisions regarding planning and products, plants and processes. Implementing some facilities decision such as GM's decision to open a new manufacturing plant so this can take five to eight years from inception to completion second 
short-term forecasting usually employs different methodologies than longer-term forecasting. Mathematical techniques such as moving averages, so later on, i-discuss natin kung ano ba yung moving averages, exponential smoothing, and trend extrapolation, all of which we shall examine shortly, are common to short-run productions. Broader, less quantitative methods are useful in predicting such issues as whether a new product like the, for example, optical disc recorder should be introduced into a company's product line. And finally, as you would expect, a short-range forecast tends to be more accurate than the longer-range forecast. So, bakit? So, factors that influence demand change every day. Thus, as the time horizon lengthens, it is likely that the forecast accuracy will diminish. It almost goes without saying that the sales forecast must be updated regularly. So, yung sales forecast mo pala, uh, it should be updated uh, regularly. So, daily siguro yan ina, ano, na update para mas maging accurate siya. So, this is to maintain their value and integrity. So, after each sales period, forecast should be reviewed and revised. So, lagi pala siyang ano, dapat nire-review and nire-revise. So, what are the types of forecast? Organization use three major type of forecast in planning future operation. So, we have this economic forecast. So, what is economic forecast? So, economic forecast, this address the business cycle by predicting inflation rates, money supplies, housing starts, and other planning indicator. Economic forecast, planning indicators that are valuable in helping organization prepare medium to long-range forecast. Next type of forecast is the technological forecast. So, these are concerned with rates of technological progress, which can result in the birth of exciting new products, requiring new plants and equipment. Technological forecast, or this is a long-term forecast concerned with the rates of technological progress. So, to make it short. Next, we have this what we call the demand forecast. So, under demand forecast, these are projection of demand for a company's product or services. So, forecast drives decisions, so manager need immediate and accurate information about real demand. They need demand-driven forecast where the focus is on rapidly identifying and taking customer desires. The forecast may use recent point of sale or yung POS data, retailer-generated reports of customer preferences, and any other information that will help to forecast with the most current data possible. So, demand-driven forecast drives a company's production, capacity, and scheduling system and serve as inputs to financial marketing and personal planning. In addition, the payoff in reduced inventory and obsolescence can be huge. Demand forecast projection of a company sales for each time period in the planning horizon. So, the economic and technological forecasting are specialized technique that may fall outside the role of the operations manager. Okay, so let's proceed with the second uh, topic. So, these are the strategic importance of forecasting. So, the forecast is the only estimate of demand until actual demand becomes known. So, good forecasts are of critical importance in all aspects of a business. The forecast is the only estimate of demand So until the actual demand becomes known. So, forecasts of demands therefore drive decision in many areas. So, let's look at the impact of product demand forecast on three activities. So, these are the supply chain management. So, we have the human resource and the capacity. So, we will discuss first the first one which is the supply chain management okay so supply chain management so good supplier relation and the ensuing advantages in product innovations cost and speed to market demand on accurate forecast next we have this human resources 
hiring, training, and laying off workers all depend on anticipated demand. So if the Human Resources Department must hire additional workers without warning, the amount of training declines and the quality of the workforce suffers. And next is the capacity. So when the capacity is inadequate, the resulting shortages can lead to loss of customer and market share. So magsashare ako dito ng example. Okay, so under supply chain management, here are uh, just three examples. So the first one is the company called Apple. So it has built an effective global system where it controls nearly every piece of the supply chain. From product design to retail store, so with rapid communication and accurate data shared up and down the supply chain, so innovation is enhanced. The same time, inventory costs are reduced and speed to market is improved. So once a product goes on sale, Apple track demand by the R for each store and adjust production forecast daily. So at Apple, forecasts for its supply chain are a strategic weapon. So another company, siguro kilala nyo to, si Toyota. So Toyota develops sophisticated car forecast with input from a variety of sources. So this include dealers, but forecasting the demand for accessories such as navigation system, custom wheels, spoilers, and so on is particularly difficult. And there are over 1,000 items that vary by model and color. As a result, Toyota not only reviews reams of data with regard to vehicle that have been built and wholesale but also look in detail at vehicle forecast before it makes judgment about the future accessory demand. When this is done correctly, the result is an efficient supply chain and satisfied customers. Another example is yung store na Walmart. So Walmart collaborates with suppliers such as Sara Lee and Proctor, Proctor and Gamble to make sure the right item is available for the right time, in the right place, and at the right price. So for instance, in hurricane season, Walmart's ability to analyze 700 million store item combination means it can forecast that not only flashlight but also Pop-Tarts and beer sell at 7 times the normal demand rate. These forecasting systems are known as collaborative planning, forecasting, and replenishment. So ito, ito isa ang tawag dito is yung CPFR. CPFR. Again, this stands for the Collaborative Planning, Forecast, and Replenishment. So, this, they combine the intelligence of multiple supply chain partner. The goal of CPFR is to create significantly more accurate information that can power the supply chain to greater sales and profit. Okay, so an example for human resources. Again, uh, the hiring and training and laying of workers all depend on the anticipated demand. So this is what happened in a large Louisiana chemical firm. So th this firm almost lost its biggest customer. So when a quick expansion to around the clock shift led to a total breakdown in quality control on the second and third shifts. So since uh, nagkulang na sila sa tauhan and kumagaher man sila, eh... Uh, hindi sila ano nga, yung competent enough or hindi sila well-trained. So, anong nangyari? Uh, 24 hours nagtatrabaho yung mga tao nila. And shifting ito, uh, which suffers its quality control. Okay? So, hindi na masyado na ano yung, or nababantayan yung quality. Since may hinahabol nga sila na ano, na demand sa mga product nila. So, ayun, muntik na nila malos yung, isa, yung biggest customer nila. Next, uh, under capacity. So, when the capacity is inadequate, the resulting shortages can lead to loss of customers and market share. So, this is what happened to Nabisco. So, Nabisco yung, ano to eh, sa mga biskuit to eh, sa US eh. So, Nabisco, when it underestimated the huge demand for its new Snackwell's Devil Food Cookies, even with production line, so, working overtime, uh, could not keep up with the demand. Okay? And this leads to the loss 
of their customers. Another company, uh, siguro familiar kay dito, yung Nintendo. So, they also faced this problem nung nirelease nila yung Wii. Wii bump, but because dun. So, this was introduced and exceeded all forecast for demand. So, the same time, uh, Amazon also, hindi ko na lang naisulat dito. So, they also made the same uh, error with its Kindle. So, ang sabi nga dyan sa pinababa, uh, on the other hand, so, when excess capacity exists, uh, cost can skyrocket. So, ano ba yung ibig sabihin dito? Uh, kung yung capacity ng isang, for example, yun yung planta, eh, hindi naman na ma-maximize. Uh, yung operational cost kasi nito, uh, masyadong malaki kung kaunti lang yung uh, na-produce nila. So, parang ganun. Next, uh, we'll now proceed with the topic 3. So, these are the 7 steps in the forecasting system. So, forecasting follows 7 basic step. So, the first one, so, we need to determine the use of the forecast. So, if, for example, do sa bukas sina kinuha ng kong reference, yung ginamit nilang example is yung Disney. So, Disney uses park attendance forecast to drive decisions about staffing, kung saan nila dadalhin yung mga staff nila, opening time, yung ano nila, operation time, kung from what time sila open hanggang magsasara, yung ride availability, and the food supplies. Uh, step number two, so select the items to be forecasted. So for the Disney World, uh, there are six main parks. Uh, forecast of daily attendance at each is the main number that determines labor, maintenance, and scheduling. Number three, uh, determine the time horizon of the forecast. So ito ba ay short, yung na-discuss natin kanina, ito ba ay medium, or under long term. So, Disney develops daily, weekly, and monthly, and annual, and also a five-year forecast. Four, uh, select the forecasting model. So, Disney uses a variety of statistical met models that we shall discuss, including moving averages, econometrics, and regression analysis. It also employs judgmental or non-quantitative models. Step number five, gather the data needed to make the forecast. So this company, Disney Forecasting Team, so they employ 35 analysts and 70 field personnel to survey 1 million people businesses every year. So Disney also uses a firm called the Global Insights. So these are this industry or this uh, company they involve for the travel industry, forecast and gather data on exchange rates, arrival into the US, airline specials, Wall Street trends, and school vacation schedule. So, dun pa lang na ano nila, nagkaaroon sila ng data kung saan sila na, kung saan nila na-anticipate na, ay, dito sa panahon na to, since, for example, yun nga, kung kailan nagkaaroon ng uh, school break yung mga bata. So, timing nila na dapat sa mga panahon nga ito, dito tayo maraming staff kasi expect na natin since maasyon. Ayan, maraming batang pupunta dito. And also yung sa ano rin, sa ibang bansa. Ano, so, hindi lang naman mga local yung nagpupunta sa Disney but also uh, tourist. Six, uh, we should make the forecast. And seven, we validate and implement the result. So at Disney, forecasts are reviewed daily at the highest levels to make sure that the model assumption and data are valid. So error measures are applied, then the forecasts are used to schedule personnel down to 15-minute intervals. So these seven steps present a systematic way of initiating, designing, and implementing a forecasting system. So when the system is to be used to generate forecasts regularly, over time, data must be routinely collected. Then, actual computation are used made by the computer. So, there are two general approaches to forecasting, just as there are two ways to tackle all decision modeling. 
One is the quantitative analysis and the other one is the qualitative approach. So, unahin natin yung quantitative uh, forecast. So, quantitative forecast uses a variety of mathematical models so that rely on historical data and or associative variables to forecast demand. Subjective or qualitative forecasts incorporate such factors as the decision maker's intuition, emotion, personal experience, and value system in reaching a forecast. So some firms uh, use one approach and some use the other. Pero in some practice, uh, mas maganda if combination netong dalawa. So, ito yung mas, uh, sabi nila mas effective daw kung combination itong quantitative and qualitative. Ayan. So, the combination of the two is usually most effective. So, number four, uh, what are the overview of qualitative methods? So, under this section, we consider four different qualitative forecasting techniques. So, the first one, we have the jury or executive opinion. So, ano ba yung jury or executive opinion? So, under this method, the opinions of a group or of high-level experts or manager, often in combination with statistical model, are pulled to arrive at a group estimate of demand. So, for example, yung Bristol Myers Squibb Company. So, they use 220 well-known research scientists as its jury of executive opinion to get a grasp on future trends in the world of medical research. So, in Bristol Myers Squibb Company, uh, nung sinerge ko siya, ito'y pagawa ng mga gamot and other medical supplies. Next, we have this, the Delphi or Delphi method. So, under this, there are three different types of participant in the Delphi method method. So we have these decision makers, the staff, personnel, and the respondents. So, ano ba yung role ng decision makers? So, decision makers, so this usually consists of a group of 5 to 10 experts who will be making the actual forecast. Yung uh, participant number 2, so ito yung mga staff personnel. So, sila yung nag-a-assist ng decision makers by preparing, distributing, collecting, and summarizing a series of questionnaires and survey results. And yung last, ano natin, yung last participant for the Delphi method, so the respondent. So, ano ba yung role ni respondent? So, these are group of people often located in different places whose judgment are valued. So, this group provides inputs to the decision makers before the forecast is made. So, for example, uh, sa state ng Alaska, so they use the Delphi method to develop its long-range economic forecast. So, a large part of the state budget is derived from the million-plus barrel of oil pumped daily through a pipeline at Prudhoe Bay. The large Delphi panel of experts had to represent all groups and opinions in the state and all geographic areas. Next, uh, we have the sales force composite. So in this uh, approach, each salesperson estimates what sales will be in his or her region. These forecasts are then reviewed to ensure that they are realistic. So then they are combined at the district and national level to reach an overall forecast. A forecast of this approach occurs at the company Lexus, where every quarter, uh, Lexus dealers have a make meeting. So, ano ba yung sa make meeting na yun? So, at this meeting, they talk about what is selling. Ano ba yung mabenta sa panahon na to? So, ano bang kulay yung kadalasang tinatanong ng mga buyers nila? And in what option? So, the factory knows uh, what to build. Ganun lang kasimple. Next, number four, we have the market survey. Ayan. 
So this method solicits input from customers or potential customers regarding the future purchasing plans. So this can help not only in preparing a forecast but also in improving product design and planning for new products. So the consumer market survey and sales force composite methods can, however, suffer from overly optimistic forecasts that may arise from customers' inputs. Okay, so guys, ito yung apat na different qualitative forecasting techniques. So again, these are jury of executive opinion. We have the Delphi method. I correct na lang kung Delphi or Delphi method yan. Next is the sales force composite. And last is the market survey. So five quantitative forecasting methods, all of which use historical data, are described in this uh, this, this video lecture. So they will fall into two categories. So the first category is the time series model. So under nito, meron tayong uh, tatlo. So these are the uh, naive approach. We have the moving averages, and we have this exponential smoothing. The next one, we have the associative model. So under nito, we have the trend projection and the linear regression. So ano ba yung time series uh, model? So time series model, so this model predicts on the assumption that the future is a function of the past. So in other words, they look at what is happened over a period of time and use a series of past data to make a forecast. So if we are predicting sales of lawn mowers, so we use the past sales for lawn mowers to make the forecast. Okay? And then for the associative method. So this method such as the linear regression. So this incorporate the variable or factor that might influence the quantity being forecast. So for example, an associative model of for lawn mower sale might use factor such as new housing starts advertising budget and competitor prices so unahin natin discuss guys yung tatlong time series model yung naib approach moving averages and exponential smoothing okay so let's now proceed with the topic number five so this is about the time series forecasting so time series is based on a sequence of evenly spaced, so for example, weekly, monthly, quarterly, and so on, data points. So example of this includes, uh, for example, uh, weekly sales of Nike Air Jordan, the quarterly earnings report of Microsoft stock, so the daily shipment of Coors beer, annual consumer price indices. So those are some of the examples. So as I forecasting time series data implies that future values are predicted only from the past values and that other variable, no matter how potentially valuable, may be ignored. So the decomposition of a time series, uh, time series has four components. So the first one, we have this thing what we call the trend. So a trend is the gradual upward or downward movement of the data over time. So changes in income, population, the age distribution, or cultural views may account for movement in trend. Next one is the thing we call the seasonality. So, ano ba ibig sabihin na seasonality? So, seasonality is a data of pattern that repeats itself after a period of days, weeks, months, or quarters. So, these are six common seasonality pattern. So, as you can see here in the table, ayan, so the first column, this is the period length. So, we have the week, month, year, and for the season length, so we all know na sa in terms of days, the number of season in pattern for a week is 7 days. So for a uh, month naman, so the number of season in pattern uh, in week sa isang month is 4 to 4 and a half. So kasi meron tayo ng 28 days, meron 30, meron 31. Kaya naging 4 and a half to. So ranging from the value of 4 to 4 and a half. So for a uh, number of season and pattern for a month, so we have 28 to 31 days. Ayan. Kasi nga, ayun nga, gaya na sabi ko kanina. Next, uh, for a quarter, so in a year, we have four quarters. Okay? 
So, yung 12 dinibide mo lang ng uh, apat. Next, uh, in terms of month naman, so we all know that we have 12 months. And in terms of week, we have 52 weeks in a year. So, meron tayong sunod. So, these are the cycles. So, what do we mean by cycles? So, cycles are pattern in the data that occur every several years. So, these are usually tied into the business cycle and are, are of major importance in short-term business analyzing analysis and planning. So, the predicting of the business cycle is difficult because they may be affected by political events or by international turmoil. And last, uh, we have this thing we call random variation. So, ano ba yung random variation? So, these are blips in the data caused by chance and unusual situation. So, they follow no discernible pattern. So, they cannot be predicted. So, we have this, uh, the naive approach. So, the simplest way to forecast is to assume that demand in the next period will be equal to the demand in the most recent period. So, in other words, the sales of a product in this period is X. Then, we can forecast that a sale in a specific period is also X. So, ano lang yan? Uh, equal yung demand niya sa recent and sa mga future periods natin. So, it turned out that for some product line, this naive approach is the most cost-effective and efficient objective forecasting model. So, at least it provides a starting point against which more sophisticated models that follow can be compared. Therefore, we can conclude that naive approach is a forecasting technique that assumes that demand in the next period is equal to demand in the most recent period. Okay guys, so ito yung ano, uh, example. So at the y-axis dito, so these are the demand for the product or service and dun sa x natin. So this is the time in year. So itong red line natin, this is the average demand over 4 years. And this green line, so ito guys yung uh, actual demand line. No, sorry, this is the trend component. So the actual demand line, so ito siya ang naka zig line, zigzag na line. Ayan. And this high point, so these are what we call the seasonal peaks. Ayan. And the random variation, ito yung uh, ito, sa lowest point natin after mo magkaroon ng seasonal peak. Okay, so ayun nga, it turns out that for some product line, this naive approach is the most effect, cost-effective and efficient objective for forecasting model. So next, uh, ito na, yung moving averages. So, a moving average forecast uses a number of historical actual data values to generate a forecast. So, moving averages are useful if we can assume that market demands will stay fairly steady over time. So, ginagamit pala to kapag uh, yung demand, we can assume that the market demand will stay fairly steady lang siya. Okay? So, a four-month moving average is found by simply summing the demand during the past four months and dividing by four. So, with each passing month, the most recent month's data are added to the sum of the previous three months' data. And the earliest month is dropped. This practice tends to smooth out short-term irregularities in the series. So, mamaya may example naman ako para mas maunawaan natin. Okay, so mathematically, the simple moving average, uh, which serve as an estimate of the next period's demand, is expressed as this equation. Again, so we have the moving average. So this is just the summation of demand in previous n periods over the total number of periods, which is denoted by n. So again, where n is the number of periods in the moving average. So for example, four or five or six months, respectively. So again, so we have an example for moving averages. So for example, Donna's Garden uh, wants a three-month moving average forecast including a forecast for next January for shed sales. So knowing that the formula again is, ayan nga, the summation of demand in period and period. 
over n. So that is the moving average. So we have here the table. So for the months, ayan nga, ang hinahanap dito is yung forecast for next January. Okay, so ito yung actual shed sales natin. So ang sabi nga, a 3-month moving average forecast. So, for this, uh, since uh, yung April yung magkakaroon ng tatlong months na succeeding, o oh, yung sinundan, so, ang formula lang yun, guys, again, uh, para makuha mo yung 3-month moving average. So, that is the just the summation of the previous month. Since 3 months yung kinoconsider, kaya ang kinoconsider natin is starting from April. Okay? So, ayan, ay may color-coded naman siya para mas madaling maunawaan. So, that is just simply the sum of January to get the 3-month moving average for April. Okay? So, that is just the sum of January up to March. So, 10 plus 12 plus 13 over 3. So, that is equals to 11 and 2 thirds. So, i-verify lang natin using our calculator. So, again, sabi nga ni ma'am, uh, dapat yung answer natin is expressed in fraction, not in decimal places, para at least walang natatapo na value. So, i-verify lang natin. If tama siya. So, divided by 3. Ayan. So, 35 over 3. Or that can be represented as 11 and 2 thirds. Okay? So, next, uh, for May. So, para naman do sa May, ang i-consider mo dito is ito. So, ipakita ko na lang yung unang dalawa kasi ito naman ay sabi nga, yung sinunda na tatlong buwan yung i-consider. So, para do sa May Guys, ang gagamitin na value ay ito. So, we have the 12 for February. And then, for March, so that is the 13. And then, yung April, isasama na natin siya. Ayan. And so on, ano, hanggang maparating mo siya dun sa December. So, to project the demand for sheds in the coming January. So, para maawa natin yung January natin. So, anong gagawin mo dyan? So, yung sinundan na tatlong buwan, which is the October, November, and December. So, just take the sum of that. 18 plus 16 plus 14. Ito. So, divided by 3. So, the answer for that is, check lang natin sa alt -Q. So, that is 18 plus 16, then plus 14. So, divided by 3. So, that is 16. So, the answer for this is 16. Okay. So, the management uh, now, ano ba yung insight natin dito? So, the management now has a forecast that average sales for the last three months. So, with this, it is easy to use and understand. So, for example, guys, uh, kung wari mapalitan yung data natin, so, rather than in December, where yung value natin is 14, what if mapalitan siya ng 18? Ano? So, ano yung magiging panibagong January forecast natin? So, ganun lang din. Uh, just by simply using the formula. Ang nangyari lang dito, so, gawin ko na lang January. So, prime. As, uh, meaning, new data tayo for December. So, ganun lang. Eight, na, napalitan lang yung 14 ng 18. Or, from the calc you, edit mo lang to. And then, divide mo ng 3. So, that is 52 over 3 or 17 and 1 third. Ayan. So, ganyan si moving averages. Okay. So, let's proceed with the next. So, paano naman kapag weighted moving average? Uh, yung previous natin, moving average lang. Ngayon naman, paano kapag weighted moving average? So, for this, uh, the weighted moving average may be expressed mathematically as... So, the weighted mo moving average is just equals to the summation of the weight for period N times the demand in period N over the weight. So, ang weights mo, yung summation ng weights, so, ito yung value ng weight na i-consider mo for the 3 months. So, again, uh, i-ano ko na lang siya. May example naman to para mas maunawa natin. Okay, so, when a detectable trend or pattern is present, weights can be used to place more emphasis on recent values. This practice makes forecasting technique more responsive to changes. Okay? Because more recent periods may be more heavily 
antiquated compared dun sa mas na mas yung mas matagal na period okay so mas malaki yung weight ng most recent o yung sinundan niya mismo compared dun sa bawa nung kahapon mas malaki yung weight niya compared nung sa isang araw okay so the choice of weight is somewhat arbitrary so because there is no set formula to determine them so tayo yung naglalagay ng value na therefore deciding which weight to use requires some experience for example if the latest month or period is weighted too heavily uh, the forecast may reflect a large unusual change in the demand or sales pattern too quickly so kapag sobrang bigat naman ayun nga yung nangyayari nagkaroon ng unusual change in dun sa demand or sale uh, ayun next uh, ganun let uh, consider the previous example so the dollar's garden supply wants to forecast storage shed sale by weighing waiting the weighing pala sorry <laughs> weighing the past three months so with more weight given to recent data to make them more significant ayan so yung approach natin dito guys yung weight na i i-assign natin so when the period is last month ang weighted value natin will be 3 okay ayan and if that is 2 months ago so lalagyan natin siya ng weight na 2 and then kapag 3 months ago that will be 1 so ang total niyan will be 6 so ito guys yung sum of the weights yung nasa baba ng equation okay so considering the same example guys uh, eto so nangyari nga lang dyan uh, diba yung formula natin eto so the most recent month for April is March ano so kaya yung 13 etong 13 nya ayan which is this one imumultiply mo siya ng 3 okay and then plus yung 2 months ago which is the value for February eto na agreen so kapag 2 months ago yan yung weighted value nya is 2 okay and kapag 3 months ago so yung 10 imumultiply mo lang ng 1 so hindi na pinakita dito since any number multiplied by 1 is the number itself okay ayan so divided by the summation of the weights or the sum of the weight which is 6 so the answer for that is 12 and 1 6 so let's just check so 3 times 13 plus 2 times 12 plus 10 times 1 so I just write the number and then divided by 6 Okay, 73 over 6 or that can be written as 12 and 1, 6. So, ganun lang din guys ha, sa sunod. So, again, uh, if you're going to consider the May. Itong May. So, mangyayari lang dyan yung previous month which is 16, imumultiply mo siya ng 3. 2 months ago, which is the value for the actual shed sale for March. So, that is 13 multiplied by 2. Ayan. And then plus... Yung, se yung actual shed sales niya nung February, so times 1 or 12 mismo and so on ok, so if you're going to solve for the forecast for January so, isolve natin so for January dito ko na lang po isulat again, uh, yung previous month so 3, then multiply by yung previous month, which is for December na 14 and then plus 2 times yung actual shed sales niya for November which is 16 and then plus uh, yung for October na 18 and then divided by 6 so what is the weighted moving average for the month of uh, January so that is 3 times 14 plus 2 times 16 and then plus 18 divided by 6 so, 46 over 3, or that can be written as 15 and 1 third. So, in this particular forecasting situation, you can see that more heavily weighted, weighting the latest month provides a more accurate projection. So, i-plinat natin siya dito sa next slide. I-plinat natin siya sa isang graph uh, para at least mas maita natin yung difference between weighted moving average and moving average. Ayan. 
Okay, so itong blue guys, ito po yung actual sales or ito yung data na nandun sa balik lang ako ng isang slide. Ito siya. Itong mga actual shade shed sales. So iplinat lang natin 'yan so nabuo natin sa graph ito. So dito sa Y, these are the sales demand and do sa X natin, this is R demand. So for example, for January, ang actual shed sales niya is 10. So, para nagpapat ka lang ng point sa axis natin. Dito sa coordinate system natin. So, sa January, yung X mo nga, di ba, January, and then 10. So, kung babalikan mo yung table, ayan, so January, 10. So, pag-connect mo lang sila, and then, uh, dito sa, itong red line, this is, is the moving average. So, ito yung ginamit natin for example number 1. And, para dun sa na agreen para do sa na agreen ito yung weighted moving average so both example and weighted moving average are effective in smoothing out sudden fluctuation in the demand pattern to provide stable estimates moving average do however present three problems ano ba yung problems na encounter natin kapag moving averages so for number 1 so the increasing by increasing the size of n or the number of periods average does smooth out fluctuations better but it makes the method less sensitive to changes in the data number two moving averages cannot pick up trends very well because they are averages so they will always stay within past levels and will not predict changes to either higher or lower levels and then uh, for number three, so moving averages require extensive records of past data. So dito sa illustration again, in this figure, so illustrates the lag effect of the moving average model. Okay, so meron daw lag dito. So note that both the moving average and weighted moving average lines lag the actual demand. The weighted moving average, however, usually reacts more quickly to demand changes. So, yung weighted moving average mo daw, itong naka-green. So, it reacts more quickly to demand changes. So, even in periods of downturn, so if you're going to see November and December, so, saan ba yan? Ayan. So, itong values na to, ayan. So, the so downturn ngayon, it more closely tracks the demand. Okay? Uh, next, uh, we have this, uh, what we call the exponential smoothing. So, exponential smoothing is a weighted moving uh, average forecasting technique in which data points are weighted by an exponential function. So it involves very little record keeping of past data and is fairly easy to use. The basic exponential smoothing formula can be shown as ayan, so the new forecast is equals lang sa last period forecast plus alpha and then multiply by the quantity of the kunin ko lang yung pointer. So, multiply by the quantity of the last period's actual demand minus the last period's forecast. So, this formula can be shown as follow. Ayan. So, ito pa yung isang representation ng equation na to. Again, uh, yung F sub D mo, so this is just the new forecast. Ginawa niya lang na ganito para since hindi siya naka-worded -word, yung equation. So, nag-denote siya ng mga variable. Again, yung F sub T mo, this is just the new forecast. Ito rin yan. Yung F T minus 1, so this is just the previous periods forecast. Okay? And then yung alpha, so this is the smoothing or waiting constant. So, this value is ranging from 0 hanggang 1. And yung A mo, T minus 1, sub T minus 1. So, this is the period, previous period's actual demand. 
So the comple- the concept is not that complex. Ano? So the latest estimate of demand is equal to the old forecast as adjusted by a fraction of the difference between the last period's actual demand and the last period's forecast. So uh, here is an example. So let's read the problem. So in January, a car dealer predicted a uh, February demand for 142 Ford Mustangs. The actual February demand was 153 autos. So using a smoothing constant chosen by the management uh, of Alpha is equal to 0.2. So the dealer wants to forecast the March demand using the exponential smoothing model. So again, uh, here is the formula. Yun, but palang ano? <laughs> Wala palang solution. Ako yung magpapakita nito. <laughs> okay. So, apply lang natin tong formula natin. Ano? So, the exponential smoothing model uh, using the equation in previous slide can be applied. So, ayan. Nilagay ko na dyan yung formula. Direct substitution naman po ito. So, kunin ko lang yung pen. Okay. So, the new forecast. So, ito yung forecast natin for the March demand. So, i-denote ko na lang siya F as F sub T. So, ito yung new forecast for March demand. Okay. So, this F sub T is just equals yung so dun sa previous periods forecast. So, alin ba yun? Uh, ako, uh, the car dealer predicted February demand. Ito, yung 142 natin. Ayan. So, predicted nga eh. Forecast. Ito yung previous period forecast. Predicted. So, ang actual February demand, yung actual, ayan, is 153 autos. So, ito siya. Ano? The previous period's actual demand. And then, yung alpha natin, so given naman sa kanya, so yung alpha daw is 0.2. Um, this value, this smoothing constant is chosen by the management. So, again, uh, pasok naman tayo sa criteria. Again, that is has limits from 0 to 1. So, ayan, isulat mo lang dito. So, F t minus 1, F sub t minus 1, or yung pre previous periods forecast na 142. So, plus yung alpha natin, which is equivalent to 0.2. And then, multiply by the quantity of the actual uh, previous demand na 153. And then, minus uh, 142. Okay. So, pindutin lang natin sa alq. Yan. So, 142. Ah, sorry. So, 142 plus 0 0.2 times uh, 153 minus 142. So, the answer for this is 144.2. So, ito yung magiging uh, new forecast natin for the month of March. Okay, so that's the March demand forecast for Ford Mustang is rounded to, so pwede mo siyang i-round up to, let's say, na 144. So using just two pieces of data, the forecast and the actual demand, the, excuse me, so using this uh, data nga, ayan nga, limited lang yung data natin, pero nakakompute tayo ng forecast for the next month, Okay. So, for example, uh, but lumipat. So, let's just say na, for example, uh, say magpalit tayo ng uh, smoothing value na, ano gusto yung value? Let's just say na 0 0.3. Let's just determine kung ano yung mangyayari sa forecast natin. So, obviously, uh, mas lalaki siya. Ano? So, gawin ko na lang tong prime. So, ito lang din naman yun. So, i-check lang natin if anong nangyayari kapag lumalaki yung alpha natin. So, 
So the new value of your new forecast, if napalitan yung alpha or yung smoothing value ng point three, will be equals to one four five three, one hundred forty five point three. So let's just say na one forty five. So nadagdagan ng isang mas tang yung ano. Uh, new forecast nila for the month of March. Okay? So, ano ba yung gusto sabihin dito kung ba't ako naglagay ng ano, another value? So, the smoothing constant, alpha is generally in the range from, ayun nga, so the smallest can be 0.05 to 0.5 for business application. It can be changed to give more weight to recent data when alpha is high or more weight to pass data when alpha is low. So when alpha reaches the extreme of 1, then in equation, all the other values drop out and the forecast becomes identical to the naive model mentioned earlier in this lecture. So that is, the forecast for the next period is just the same as the periods demand. So, habang lumalaki daw yung alpha, uh, ano lang siya. Nagiging same lang do sa periods demand. So, the following table, eto, meron table dyan. So, this help illustrate this concept. For example, when alpha is uh, 0.5, eto, we can see that the new forecast is based almost entirely on demand in the last 3 or 4 periods. So, when alpha is equals to 1, the forecast, uh, point 1, the forecast places little weight on recent demand and takes many periods of historical values into account. Ayan. So, if you're going to compare the value of alpha na point 0.1 and 0 0.5, so if that is the most recent period, ayan, so same lang sila ng value. But if it's the second most recent period, so, kung napansin nyo yung 0.5 na hati agad siya sa kalahati. Unlike dito sa 0.1, kaunti lang inabawa sa kanya 0.09. And so on. So, in selecting the uh, smoothing constant, Exponential smoothing has been successfully applied in virtually every type of business. However, the appropriate value of the smoothing constant alpha can make the difference between an accurate forecast and an inaccurate forecast. So, the high values of alpha are chosen when the under underlying average is likely to change. And low values of alpha are used when the underlying average is fairly stable. So, in picking a value, for the smoothing constant, the objective is to obtain the most accurate forecast. Okay, next, uh, how do we measure the forecast error? Ayan eh. So, the overall accuracy of any forecasting model, yung moving averages, exponential smoothing, or other can be determined by comparing the forecasted values with the actual or observed values. So, here is the equation for the forecast error. So, we have the actual demand minus the forecast value. Or that is just equals to 8 sub t minus f sub t. Several measures are used in practice to calculate the overall forecast error. So, these measures can be used to compare different forecasting models as well as to monitor the forecast to ensure they are performing well. So, three of the most popular measures are the mean absolute deviation or the MAD, the mean squared error or also known as the MSE, and we all also the third one, this is the MAP or the mean absolute percent error. So, we will now discuss uh, and give an example for each measures of forecast accuracy. So, let's start first with the first one, the mean absolute deviation. So, a measure of the 
overall forecast for a model is the mean absolute deviation. So given ka na equation na ganyan nga, summation of actual is summation of minus the summation of forecast over n. So this value is computed by taking the sum of the absolute values. Absolute, uh, uh, meaning kapag absolute or naakulong ka dito sa ganyan. So if it's negative value, we consider that as positive. So regardless of the sign, positive yung i-consider natin. So this value is computed by taking the sum of the absolute values of the individual forecast errors or deviations and dividing by the number of periods of data. So here is an example in determining the mean absolute deviation or the MAD. So given here in the problem, so during the past eight quarters, the port of Baltimore has unloaded three, uh, has unloaded large quantities of grain from ships. The port's operation manager wants to test the use of exponential smoothing to see how well the technique works in predicting tonnage unloaded. He guesses that the forecast grain unloaded in the first quarter was 175 tons. Two values of alpha are to be examined. So the first value, so nagbigay siya ng alpha which is 0 0.1 and the second value is 0 0.5. So, eto yung sa alpha, ano, pinakita dyan. Again, uh, this first quarter, uh, in-assume niya na yung, ano niya, yung forecast niya for the first quarter is 175. That's why, uh, dito, ayan, ikinip niya muna yan. Ano, kasi ito yung ating first quarter. Okay, so the step number one, uh, ito nga, yung na-discuss natin kanina. So, to get the new forecast, for the second quarter. So, yung ating uh, forecast from the previous period, i-ano lang natin siya. Yung actual, isusubtract lang natin sa forecast. And then, i-multiply lang natin yun ng uh, kanyang alpha or the smoothing constant, which is 0 0.1. Itong table nato is for 0 0.1. And then, itong katabi niya is for the smoothing constant of 0 0.5. Okay, dito sa 0 0.5, hindi na niya pinaita yung equation. Uh, I-discuss ko na lang yung isa. Pero, ano lang naman yan? May pattern and i-ano mo lang naman dito sa formula natin. So, para dito sa second quarter, again, uh, to get the forecast for that period, second quarter. So, that is equals lang sa, eto nga, yung equation na to, the previous periods forecast, which is, 175 plus yung iyong alpha na 0 0.1 and then multiply by the quantity of the actual period the previous period actual demand na 180 eto minus 175 so the answer for that is 175.5 so we'll just going to verify that first data so 175 plus 0 0.1 and then multiply by the quantity of the actual demand minus the forecast na 175. So that is 175.5. Ayan. So ganun lang din yung gagawin sa sunod. So para sa third quarter, ang i-consider mong mga values is yung 175.5. Uh, so that is the forecast value and then yung actual niya which is 168. Okay? So, ang lalabas sa kanya is 174.75. And then, nangyari lang guys dito, uh, itong 177.5. So, kagaya nung ginawa natin kanina, di ba nag-assume na lang ako ng isa pang value. So, mangyayari lang dun sa ito nga, since nakasalpak naman sa calculator natin. So, check natin if 177.5 yung lalabas. So, mangyayari nga lang ulit dito, mapapaltan lang yung smoothing constant natin eto ng 0.5 Okay, so doon nakuha yung 177.5 Ayan So nung gumawa tayo ng table 
So to evaluate the accuracy of each smoothing constant, we can compute forecast error in terms of absolute de deviation and the MAD. So paano ba makukuha yung uh, absolute deviation? So again, ano lang yan ha? Uh, difference lang. Okay, so this is the absolute difference ng deviation natin. So pinagsubtract lang to, itong dalawa. Yung actual minus forecast. Or kahit magkabaligtad man yan, since absolute value yan. So kung, for example, nauna yung 175 minus 180. Di ba negative 5 yan? Eh since absolute value tayo, so 5 pa rin yung i-consider natin. So ito lang yan, pinagsubtract lang to. Ayan, so lalabas to. Okay? So ganun lang din yung gagawin nyo doon sa kabila. So, try natin to Itong 7.5. Paano ba nakuha yan? So, that is just the difference of 168 minus 175.5. Check lang natin dito. So, 168 minus 175.5. Ayan. So, that is 7.5. Again, absolute value. So, lagi siyang positive. And then, how about yung 9.5? So, ito lang. Itong forecast with a uh, smoothing constant of 0.5 which is 177.5 minus the actual na 168. So, check natin kung paano yung nakuha yung 9.5 ba. So, nangyari lang dyan, itong 177.5 minus itong 168. Okay? So, mapapalitan lang to. Ano nga to? 177.5. Ayan. So, nakuha si 9.5. So, ito, para maku makuha natin yung MAD niya or yung mean absolute deviation. So, paano ba nakuha itong ito? Itong 10.31. Ito na yung MAD niya. Eh. For the smoothing constant of 0.1. And then, ito yung para sa 0.5. So, nanggaling yung 10.31. So, sige, pakita natin. So, yung MAD for 0.1. So, lagyan lang dito. 0.1. So, that that is just equals lang sa summation na itong lahat. I-add mo lang lahat to. Ano? So, just take the sum of that. So, check natin. Ang lumabas kasi sa kanya dito is 82.45. So, check lang natin. Ano? So, sum lang natin to So, 5. Ano yung sunod? 7.5. So, plus 15.75. Plus 1.82. Plus 16.64. Plus 29.98. Plus... 1.98 plus 3.78 Ayan, so 82.45 So, ganun lang din guys ang gagawin nyo dito ha Just take the summation of this And then over the number of data So, ilan ba yan? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 So, divided by 8 lang Para makuha yung MAD So, 82.45 Tapos kung ilang entry siya 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 Over 8 so that is 82.45 divided by 8 So that is 10.30625 So ginawa na lang niya 2 decimal places or that is 10.31 And same lang din ang gagawin dito ha So yung 98.62 So divided by 8 Kaya nakuha yung 12.33 Okay So, most computerized forecasting software includes a feature that automatically finds the smoothing constant with the lowest forecast errors. And some software modifies the value if the errors become larger than acceptable. So, meron daw may mga software na para compute to. So, hindi na natin kailangan manung-manuhin. Okay? So, wala lang ako nun. Ito pala, may ano pala ako dito. Pinaita pala dito. Step 2, ayun nga, yung forecast error. So, actual lang siya. Actual demand minus the forecast value. So, ito lang guys yung deviation. Eh. Ayan, actual deviation. So, just is, yung forecast error dito is just the absolute deviation. Okay? Ayan, may step-by-step -step process pala ako dito. Step number 3, ayun nga. Yung MAD mo, ayun. Summation lang nun. Ayan, na-discuss ko rin naman guys. Ano? So, ito namang copy ng PowerPoint. I-bibigay rin naman yan.
i-upload sa LMS natin. Ano? So, kung sakaling ano rin. And ito, yun nga, may video lecture. Pwede nyo naman siyang panoorin. Anytime, anywhere. Okay, next. Uh, this time, uh, doon naman tayo sa MSE or yung mean squared error. So, paano ba siya? The average of the square difference between the forecasted and observed values. So, that has a formula of MSE is equal to the forecast error squared all over N. So, from the previous example, uh, I consider na lang natin dyan, uh, yun nga, the open operations manager for the port of Baltimore na now wants to compute the MSE for alpha na 0.1. Okay, given yung mga data, guys, uh, ito lang naman yung nang, nang, nagbago dun. Ano? So, yung deviation niya, or yung error nitong dalawa, actual versus forecast, uh, ano lang to, di ba, ito is 5. Difference lang yan. Tapos, yung error, ito yung error, tal ito yung error. Dininote niya to sa as error. Or yung deviation niya. Wala palang control C. Error or deviation between the actual and the uh, forecast. So, in-squared niya lang dito sa second, uh, dito sa last column. So, subtract mo lang to for example, yung second data nga natin. So, 168, the actual, minus 175.5. Ayan. So, since you squared mo rin naman yung 7.5, so, magiging positive rin naman. Okay? So, try pa natin dito, isa pa. So, that is 159, the actual, minus the forecast na 174.75 Ayan, so 15.75 Ito Tapos squared mo lang So that is 24.06 And then coming from the equation for MSE Di ba meron tayong forecast error Yung summation nito lahat Again, ipag a mo lang siya So ang total na lumabas sa kanya is uh, 156.28 Ah, uh, 52 so, verify lang natin ito. Pindutin natin sa ALQ. So, we have 25 plus 56.25 plus, ano yun? 248.06 plus 3.31 plus 276.89 plus 898.8 plus 3.92 and then plus uh, 14.29 Ayan, so tama naman no? 1526.52 So yung squared ng forecast error na yan And then i-divide mo lang siya dun sa ano Sa total number nito So that is 8 again So divided by 8 So we have 190.8 Okay, so how about naman dun sa ano, sa, try natin. Ito yung deviation na nakuha natin for, ah, uh, sa, tawag dyan? Dun sa smoothing constant na 0 0.5. So, ang gagawin nga lang dito guys, uh, para makompute yung error squared. Ayan. Again, deviation and error, ito lang din yun, ano. So, squared mo lang to. So, check natin if ano yung magiging MSE o the mean squared error for the smoothing constant of 0 0.5. So, ito is yung pang 0 0.1. Okay, may sagot kasi dito. Ang sabi niya, 195.24. So, i-check natin. Palabasin natin, guys. Ano, para napapractice din tayo. Okay, so, squared mo lang to. So, this is 25. 9.5 squared So this is 90.25 We have also 13.75 So that is 189.0625 189 .06. Tapos 9.12 squared so that is 
83.1744 and then we have also 19.56 squared so 382.5936 382.5936 and then anong sinundan so 24.78 squared 614.0484 614.0484 and then 12.61 so 159.0121 and then 4.3 squared so 18.49 ayan so isam lang natin to guys so this will be 25 plus 90.25 plus 189.0625 plus 83.1744 plus 382.5936 plus 614.0484 plus 159.0121 and then plus 18.49 so the total is 1561.631 so just divide this by 8 ayan so, nagkaroon lang ng konting discrepancy kasi ito. Ito kasi it's two decimal places. Eh, kami kasi, uh, nasanay rin kami na four decimal. Mas accurate to yung atin. So, mali yung lib libro. <laughs> Chika lang. Over eight. So, that is 195. 195.2039. So, check nyo na lang guys ha, uh, if 2 decimal place, uh, obviously mas lala, makukuha natin siguro to. Pero yung since tayo 4 decimal place, again, mas accurate naman to nakuha natin. Okay, so, the mean squared error tends to accentuate large deviation due to the squared term. So, for example, if the forecast error for period 1 is twice as large as the error for period number 2, the squared error in period 1 is 4 times as large as that for period 2. So hence, using MSE as the measure of forecast error typically indicates that we prefer to have several smaller deviation than even one large deviation. Okay, next that we're going to discuss is the... MAPE or yung mas kilala sa tawag na mean absolute percentage error. So, the MAPE, a problem with both the MAD and MSE is that their values depend on the magnitude of the item being forecast. So, if the forecast item is measured in 1000, the MAD and MSE values can be very large. So, to avoid this problem, uh, we can use the mean absolute percentage error. So, this is computed as the average of the absolute difference between the forecasted and actual values expressed as a percentage of the actual values. So, that is, if we have forecasted and actual values for n periods, the MAPE is calculated as Ayan. So, given this equation. Okay. So, ipakita natin kung paano siya ginagamit. So, again, considering the same problem uh, for the port of Baltimore, wants to know and calculate the MAPE when alpha is 0 0.1. So, ang gawin natin, compute na rin natin yung para sa 0 0.5. 
Okay, so again, MAPE. So this is just the absolute percent error divided by the N or the total number of quarters for this example. So again, uh, ito yung data na na-compute natin nung una. Itong dalawa for these two columns. So to solve for the absolute percent error, so that is just 100 and then multiply by the error over the actual. So ang error natin guys is ito. So again, yung difference itong dalawa. Ano? Absolute percent error. So I think meron tong table kanina. Pero ilatag na lang ulit natin dito. So itong una, 5. Ayan. So ito yun. And then divided by the actual. So ito yung actual ah. Actual. So, kaya naging divided by 80 siya. Okay? So, ang mga sagot natin dito is na a percentage siya. Kasi absolute percent error nga yung ginagamit natin. So, try lang natin i-check yung unang value if tama. So, that is 100 times 5 divided by 180. So, that is 2.78%. Okay? So, sample lang ko lang ulit sa pangalawa. So, para ma-obsuhay yung absolute percent error niyan. So, kunin mo muna yung difference itong dalawa. Again, 168 minus 175.5. So, 7.5. Ayan. And then, divided by the actual, which is 168. And then, multiply by 100. And so on. Ano? So, kapag sinamation mo yan, ayan. So, lalabas sa is 44.75. So, let's just check if tama. So, 2.78 plus 4.46 and then plus 9.9 .9, then plus 1.05 plus 8.76 then plus 14.62 uh, plus 1.1 .1, and then plus 2.08. So, the sum is 44.75 and then divide again by 8. And so, that is 5.59%. Uh, percent. So, if you are going to solve naman for the uh, MAPE for 0 0.5. So, dito ay kinuha na yung ano, absolute deviation. So, ito maganda dito. Nakuha na natin siya from the table. Yung kanina natin pinagsasol. Again, we're just considering the same examples. Ano? So, ikinocompare lang natin yung MAD, MSE, and yung MAPE. Kasi mamaya, i-discuss natin yung differences. Uh, or yung summary, kung paano ba nagdi-differ itong tatlong ito. Or paano sila nagkakaiba-iba. Okay, so try lang natin o oh guys dito. Uh, paano ba siya ma-compute? So, gawin ko na lang tong APE. Absolute percent error para dun sa 0.5. So again, that is just equals lang sa 100 and then multiply by yung deviation which is itong nasa table na to. Ayan. So times 5 and then divided by the actual. It's 180. So that is 2.78 lang din. Copy mo lang yan. Okay, and so on. So idiretso ko na lang siya sa alq. Hindi ko na isusulat yung equation. So 100 times the deviation which is 9.5. Ayan. 9.5 and then divided by the actual so 168 so 5.65 so siguro for this ano example mag 2 decimal places na rin tayo para ma medyo malapit tayo sa sagot so dito sa book ang sagot sa kanya is MAPE is 6.75 percent madudali lang naman yung equation di ba so ito kasi hindi ko pa rin naso solve to actual natin siyang iso solve Pero sabi doon, may sagot siyang 6.75. So, palabasin natin. So, ito is 5.65. 5.65. Then, let's proceed with the next one. So, ito mapapalitan lang ng 13.75. Yung deviation niya. Or yung difference. So, tapos, ito mapapalitan ng 159. Yung actual. So, this is 8.65. And then next, uh, 100 
times 1, 2, 3 9.12 then divided by 175 this is 5.21 tama ba? 21 check ko nga ito una, dalawa, tatlo, apat okay then sunod so 19.56 and then divided by 190 So that is 10.29 And then you know is 24.78 24.78 And then over 205 So that is 12.09 And then 12.61 So over 180 That is 7.01 Ayan, last na And then last, uh, 4.3 So na-percent yan guys ha Hindi ko na lang sinulat So, 4.3 plus 182. 2.36. So, the sum of percent error. So, equal siya sa. Check natin. 2.78 plus 5.65 plus 8.65. Plus 5.21 Plus 10.29 Plus 12.09 Plus 7.01 Then plus 2.36 So that is 54.04 So divided by 8 So 54.04% Divided by 8 So, 6.755 Mali na naman yung libro <laughs> So, okay siya, ano? So, ba't naging kaputal na naman? Anyway, uh, at least, uh, dikit na sila, ano? Yun na rin yung tama yan Okay, so, the MAPE is perhaps the easiest measure to interpret So, for example, a result that the MAPE is 6% is a clear statement that that is not dependent on issue such as the magnitude of the input data. Okay, so again, uh, sabi nga, ito nga daw yung MAPE, yung pinakamadaling uh, interpret. Okay, so what is the summary on how MAD, MSE, M MSE, and MAPE differ? So ayan, uh, so these are the comparison. So we have the mode of measurement deviation niya. So, the first one is mean absolute deviation, MAD. So, ang meaning niya, so, how much the forecast missed the target? So, this is the meaning of MAD. From which yung equation, ito nga. And then, ang application niya, para dito to sa example na to. So, for smoothing constant na 0 0.1, the forecast for grain unloaded was off by an average of 10.31 tons. Okay? Next for mean squared error, so yung kanya meaning dito is this is the square of how much the forecast missed the target. So this is the square of how much the forecast missed the target. Okay, kusaan again yung equation niya, so squared nga, so kaya na squared din to. From which, for the application for this example, so for alpha na 0 0.1, the square of the forecast error was 90.8. So this number does not have a physical meaning. But it's useful when compared to the MSE of another forecast, which is yung one natin for 0 0.5. Next, for the mean absolute percent error, so this is the average percent error given by this equation. 
So, for the application of the, in this example, for smoothing constant of 0 0.1, the forecast is of by 5.59% on average. So, as in example 4 and 5, some forecasts were too high and some were low. So, simple exponential smoothing, the technique we just illustrated in example 3 to 6 is like any other moving average technique. But it fails to respond to trends. Other forecasting techniques that can deal with trends are certainly available. However, because exponential smoothing is such a popular modeling approach in business, so let us look at it in more detail. So guys, uh, for the exponential smoothing with trend adjustment, uh, we'll continue this on the second part of the video lecture. So tingnan natin kasi medyo marami pa yung uh, coverage dito. So maybe this this will be a three-part video. So inaaral ko pa lang din. Ano? So piliting ko na this week ma-provide yung natitiran topics. All right guys, thank you and see you sa aking next video lecture.